Hi, my name's Brendan from SSW TV. I'm here at um, NDC Sydney 2019, and I'm joined here by Ryan Novak, who's travelled in from Seattle. Um, thanks for coming. Um, thanks, thanks, Brendan. Fresh out of his um, excellent talk this morning. Um, but first, um, who do you work for and what's your job title? What's your day to day? So I work for Microsoft. Uh, my job title is Principal Software Architect. Um, it makes it sound like I just draw diagrams and things. Really, I do a lot of work uh, writing code, talking to customers, uh, helping developers design things, and figuring out what's going in our products as far as ASP.NET Core is concerned. Great stuff. And what was your talk on today? What did you cover? So my talk today was called The Future of ASP.NET Core, The Next Five Years. And it, it covered a couple big ideas in the future of ASP.NET Core. So more changes to networking, more changes to routing middleware and MVC, uh, Blazor and Electron, and some stuff about publishing as well. Fantastic stuff. And you've got some uh, a demo to show us today. So. Yeah, I'd love to show you demo. Um, I've got a demo of some changes that happened in 3.0 with respect to routing. And I want to talk through why we did those changes and kind of what you get out of it. Let's take a look at this. So I've got a MVC application here, and this is in the style of an MVC 2.2 application. So you can see I've got this use MVC with default route. And that's hooking up the routing middleware with a default route that's going to give you your sort of uh, controller action ID style of route. The yes, kind of the thing same was, route we've had by default all the way through the history of MVC. Absolutely, yeah. the thing that you always start with. And I've got this home controller class here. And I, in my home controller, I've got this secret info action, and I've stuck an authorized attribute on there. I'm going to go ahead and run this just to prove my point. And what you're going to see is I can hit the home page just fine. But when I try to go to this secret action, I'm going to get bounced to a login screen yeah. because I am not authorized. I haven't logged in. And that's great. And that's a useful feature that everybody loves about MVC. And I'm sure people use this all the time. Um, but what's not so great about this is that authorized attribute and the way that this is implemented is an aspect of MVC that is purely tied to MVC and controllers and pages, mm -hmm. the framework. If you wanted to use this authorization system for something else, you couldn't do it because there's no capability provided by ASP.NET to do that. So as an example, let's add a health checks endpoint. And this is something that comes up kind of a lot. So we'll add health checks here and we'll listen on health Z. And health checks is something that you might have in your application if you're using a monitoring service or like a logging dashboard or a metrics dashboard that is a purpose-built endpoint that is for a monitoring service to check and basically make sure if your application is up or responding. Now, a topic that comes up a lot with this is, well, what if I want to secure that endpoint? What do I do if I want to make sure that only my monitoring service can talk to that endpoint? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. And we don't have a way to, we don't, we just don't have a way to do that in this system. Because if you think about it, authorization, I can't slap an authorized attribute on this thing. There's no way. There's no authorization middleware, and there's no way to sort of wrap an authorization check around that, which is something that I want to do. Oh, I see, yes. Yeah. So the um, use health checks is totally middleware based, mm -hmm. and the previous authentication system was totally MVC mm -hmm. controller action based. If it's middleware, there's no controller action, there's so no way to put your authorized attribute. Exactly, well stated. So um, that raises sort of an interesting question. Why can't we just do authorization for middleware? And the new, the new routing system is one of the things that unlocks that capability. So I'm going to switch us over to a new style startup here. And in my new style startup, and this is what you'll see in 3.0 when you create your app, you're going to see like these three or four amigos. Use routing, use authentication, and use authorization, and use endpoints. So use endpoints is a little bit bigger and a little bit more verbose, but you can see some things that probably make sense here, like a controller route and razor pages yeah. and so on. It's definitely more explicit. You can see the pattern that it's using rather than it just being implicit and tucked away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to have the implicit thing as well, you can do that. We have a, we have a map default controller route here, which will give you kind of the same thing you had before. Um, but this is what's in the template in 3.0. The other thing about this is it's a little bit more generic than MVC. So I can come in here with my endpoints builder, hit caps lock there, and I can say map signal R or map hub, and I can hook up a signal R hub here just as well. And this is all part of the same routing system, and all of these things have access to the same features and the same dispatching logic. So signal R and MVC now share routing logic as does our new gRPC framework that we developed um, with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. But I want to get back to our original sort of point, which is how do we do uh, authorization or something like that for health checks, which is based on a middleware. Well, we made it easy for you to wire up health checks as an endpoint. 
So you can do this with any middleware and it's pretty convenient uh, to do. If you look at the map health check source code, you can find how to do it. And we're basically taking the health checks middleware the way it was set up before and we're putting a route in front of it. So there's, instead of being this big fat pipeline that runs one after another, you can think of it like a branch in the trail or a fork in the road. All right, so it's got a branching structure rather than because previous middleware was always this, next, 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 next. Yeah, yeah, and that's how you should think about the difference between yeah. like a middleware and a yeah. routing system is a routing system is gonna branch out in different directions. Now, what's special about the routing system that we've designed in 3.0 is that it's actually two-step. So you've got this use routing thing here and you've got this use endpoints thing here. And the reason why it's in two phases is so that you can put stuff in between those phases and you can understand what's going on in the system. So we can do a little experiment here. I can add something here, I'll say app.use, and I'll add a little home-built middleware here. This is just me getting, kind of writing a, a manual middleware. And I'm gonna get in between these two, I'm gonna forward every call that comes to me, and I'm just gonna look at what I'm getting. So there's a new method um, on the HTTP context, and I'm just gonna log the result, and I'm gonna log what endpoint we're getting. So we'll say found context get endpoint dot display name. And so every time we hit this with a request that goes through routing, you'll see us log what we saw. So that's a new piece of API, that context.get endpoint. This is a new yeah. this is a new first class API, and this is a brand new concept in 3.0. And an endpoint, what that is, is it represents um, sort of the contract between the thing that makes routing decisions and the thing that executes routes. So an endpoint represents basically what was chosen by the routing system. So we went to our index page here, and you can see I found home controller index. If I try to go to the secrets page, it's going to bounce me again. And so you can see I got, I found first home controller secret info. Then that went into the authorization yeah. system. The authorization system said no. Then I found the razor page account login. If I try to go to the health endpoint that we just added, then you'll see I can hit that. And I found the health checks endpoint. So all of these things that routing can produce are all represented in the system with endpoints. Make sense? Yeah, so great. So it's such a uh, concrete entity for um, actually handling that logic rather than it just being kind of an own pitch string. It's actually a yeah, place yeah. with an attached configuration to Yeah, it. yeah. And it's in, it's meant to be a universal model. So endpoints yeah. could represent signal R, they could represent yeah. server-side Blazor, could represent gRPC, they could represent a middleware that's hooked up to routing. Now, the other thing that you can do with endpoints that's cool that we're getting to the, the point yeah. of all this is I can add policies and I can add metadata to these endpoints. So just like I had a place to put an authorized attribute on a controller method, I now have a place to put an authorization attribute on an individual middleware or something like this. So I can now say require authorization here on my health checks endpoint. And because I didn't specify anything, this is just going to use my default policy. So now if I try to hit that, I'm going to get bounced to the login in. page, and that's witchcraft, right? Because I didn't, I didn't uh, use MVC to solve that. I didn't have to uh, adopt this thick framework. I could do that with anything. That's right, and I have seen this apps before that have taken on board MVC mm -hmm. just to get some behaviors. When you don't need, you're not doing um, the full MVC route. You just, you know, a middleware would have sufficed, but to get that behavior in, they've had to put in the full MVC stack. Yeah, that's right. And we hope that this gives you a little, a few more options so that you can use the right tool for the job um, by making things like authentication and other things like that accessible to you basically at any layer of the system. For my last trick here, I just want to show how you can use endpoints to run some kind of arbitrary code. So I'll say map get and I'll say hello and I'll make a little hello world endpoint here. And this is just going to be a delegate taking the um, taking the HTTP context. And I can, I'll just write out hello world to the response. This is what you get, one of the things you get by default in your default template these days, if you create the empty template, hello world. And I can even put require authorization on that. I have to, I have to jump outside of this. I can even put require authorization if, on that if I want to. All of these things that are uh, part of the routing system are kind of independent of what you're routing to. They all work the same. Yeah. So yeah, as you build things up in a sort of piece by piece level, and yeah, yeah it's just definitely more flexible. Like the whole concept of bringing in signal hub configuration, mm -hmm. mapping endpoints, and MVC all in one kind of centralized location. Because I've seen plenty of places, and certainly the old .NET 
there were some terrible problems with, um, conf- there was two sets of configuration, mm-hmm. one point one for your API controllers and one for your other controllers, yep. and that leads to all kinds of confusion. So seeing yep. it all unified. We're trying to keep everything together better. and make yeah. everything have a uniform kind of programming experience like that. Well, fantastic. That's yeah, um, good information. So uh, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, Brendan. So thanks for watching. You've been watching SSWTV at ND Sydney, and um, please subscribe for more great content. Thank you.